Hi, my name is Laurie Rousseau-Nepton. I'm Inu Pequa Camelnoats from the Massayage community in Quebec. I'm also an astronomer at the University of Toronto and the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics. Ah, solar eclipses. Many communities across the country share stories about this magnificent phenomenon. On April 8th, many of us will have the chance to see a total eclipse of the sun. This eclipse will pass through the southeast of the country, the south of Ontario and Quebec, the center of New Brunswick, the north of the Prince Edward Island, the tip north of the Nova Scotia, and the center of the Newfoundland Island. If you're not lucky and you're not directly on the path of the total eclipse, you will still be able to see a partial eclipse, and that everywhere in Canada. Ah, that's very rare. And for this occasion, we will cross the country as well from west to east with stories from indigenous community on the land. Let's start with my friend Sam from the Oneida Nation. Sagali swagwaik. Deyantkwa ni agets. Wage guaho ni wage the load. Onyata aga ni wagoha jod. Hello everyone. My English name is Samantha Darkstater. My clan is Wolf and my nation is Oneida. Wade gwenuhe la du ga iga. Watni sla de ji awa du. Aye swadu husada. I'm thankful on this day that, I, that you can listen to what I'm bringing to you. Um, so our Haudenosaunee creation story, it, it starts in Sky World. And um, there was a lady, we call her Sky Woman. And when she became a certain age and she became pregnant, she made a journey. Um, through a hole in the sky to create a new world, a new world here. And so this earth world, what we know it to be, was then water world. And so Sky Woman, she made that journey while she was carrying child within her. And so she came to water world and um, as she was coming, making that journey from Sky World, the water birds, they caught her and they created a bed for her to land on and they lowered her down to the turtle's back. And on the turtle's back is where she created earth. The water animals, they went and they dove down in the water and they got dirt for her. And she planted the seeds that she brought with her from Sky World, the corn, the beans and the squash. That's part of our Genhequa, our sustenance. And also the strawberries, the sacred tobacco, and the wild potatoes. So those are really celestial plants. And so as she planted those, she planted them on the back of the turtle and she danced uh, like a women's dance, a shuffle, and she sang seed songs. And she danced in a counterclockwise motion. And when Sky Woman gave birth to her daughter, her daughter grew very rapidly. And as her daughter became old enough, um, the west wind, some say the turtle man also, we have different versions of our creation stories and they're all important. And so he courted her and he asked Sky Woman if he could marry her daughter and she agreed. So Sky Woman allowed them to be married and he laid two arrows beside her. And when he did this, she became pregnant with twin boys. One arrow had a flint tip and the other had none. And so the twins were born. And when they were born, the right-handed twin, who we now know as Songwaya Dizo, the creator, he was born the natural way. His brother, the left-handed twin, he was born out of her side. And their mother didn't survive childbirth. So they were raised by their grandma, Sky Woman. And when Sky Woman, their grandma, when she passed away, the twin brothers, they fought over where to bury her. And as that was happening, her body um, was um, lifted up into the sky and she becomes the moon. So we refer to the moon as Yunki Sut. And that's saying she's grandma to all of us. So because Sky Woman becomes grandmother moon, and when Sky Woman first danced on the back of the turtle, she danced in a counterclockwise motion. The moon cycles also go in a counterclockwise motion. 
So the twin brothers, they go on to create earth and they create that balance. The, the right-handed twin, Songoya Dizo, you know, when he first created the waterways, he made them straight where they would have a current that went one in direction and then the other direction would, um, the current would come back in the other direction. And then his left-handed twin, the mischievous one they call him, he would come and he would mess up the waterways and he would add currents and boulders into them. But what they created was balance here on earth. And, you know, we learn to appreciate um, all of those positive things when we have that balance. And so we have different um, versions of our creation story also on how the sun was created. So there is a version um, where they say that the sun was Sky Woman's older brother in Sky World. There's another that says he was her partner. And there's another one that says Songwaya Dizzo becomes the sun. And they're all valid and they're all important. And the common denominator is that the sun represents that positive male energy. And so when there's a, an eclipse, it's a special time because they're related. The sun and the moon are family. And our elders, you know, they, they tell us not to look at an eclipse. And it's, you know, there is reasons to protect our eyes with that. But there's also an, an emotional part of that. And so when the sun and the moon, when they're crossing over, it's like, have you ever like not seen your family for a long time? And you get really emotional when you see each other because they're only going to have like a quick visit. And so they're leading up to that and they're excited to see each other. They visit for those quick moments. And then at the same time, they have to say, see you later. So it's really emotional time for them. And even sometimes when that happens to us with our own family, we get emotional and other people might say, oh, I'm going to step away. I'm going to step out of the room. I'm going to let you guys have this moment. And a total eclipse, a total solar eclipse is so special to my people that we don't have to look at it. We can still feel the energy and the love and the support from it. And we have two different words for an eclipse. It's Wadwahdahni Dazle, and that means they're crossing over each other. But there's another word, it's called Adahni Dado, and that means the moon is hiding. So those are two different Oneida words. And they say the great law of peace was created under a total, a total solar eclipse. And so a long time ago, the Haudenosaunee people, we agreed to, you know, to live in be peace and to have that balance. And through the, the years, um, you know, we've, we've faced many things and we've almost, you know, we've almost lost that balance in a sense. So on the next total solar eclipse, I'm hoping that that will help to restore that balance with my people. So that's how it will be in our minds. Indigenous language describe the moon, the sun, and eclipses in a way that reflects their role and importance for Indigenous people. We just heard with Sam the meaning of the words sun, moon, and eclipses for the Oneida Nation. Now let's meet Melanie de Mers, who will talk about the Mohawk language, and I will do a segment for the Innu language as well. We will discuss the meaning of those words in the different language from the communities. Segu, Seoguegu, Melanie Niwaksanoda, Dahnu Kanyake Halka, Niwagu Wanjoda. Hi everyone, my name is Melanie and I'm a Mohawk member of the Six Nations of the Grand River, as well as Quebecois. Um, to my knowledge, there are two Mohawk sayings that mean the sun. One is Etsidewachia, Diokanega, Garakwa, and the other is Sungwachia. These words mean our elder brother the daytime orb, or our elder brother the sun. And the sun is said to carry the responsibilities of life on Earth. One phrase I have seen describing the moon is Yeti Sota Asantanega Garakwa, which means our grandmother, the nighttime orb. Grandmother Moon is said to watch over us and is linked to women's cycles, planting cycles, and the tides, as well as water rising and falling. These words come from the creation story, 
where Sky Woman becomes Grandmother Moon and her elder brother becomes the sun. Um, one word I've heard for lunar eclipse is Yorakwaseiru, and one word for solar eclipse is Dewadeyorakwaranhosnu. Yawa. Thank you. The Inu word for sun is Pishimu, or Tshishko Pishimu, or Kashishko Pishimu. Pishimu means month or as a measure of time, whereas Tshishko and Kashishko means the day. For the moon, it's Tshishko Pishimu. She's also associated with the measure of time, and Tshishko means the night. Both objects were used to measure time, one being more used during the day, whereas the other during the night. Both words are part of the living object of the Inu language, the Inu Aiman. Just like plants, humans, and animals. For eclipses, there's two words, chekushimu and akushimu. That both means hiding behind or below something, and can be associated with the moon or the sun words depending on the eclipse. Now let's meet with Melanie, who's going to talk to us about a very, very old treaty that was signed during a total solar eclipse. A long time ago, the Haudenosaunee people were said to be at war. One warrior at the time named Iowata then met a prophet known as the Peacemaker. Iowata was one of the Peacemaker's first followers, but he had a very hard life. Some accounts say that he had three daughters, and other accounts say that he had seven daughters, but all of his daughters died unexpectedly. With his heart broken from grief, Iowata walked along a lake and discovered pure white shells that he named wampum. He thought of a way to use the purity of the shells to bring a person to a clear state of mind while they are in grief. As time went on, Iowata and the peacemaker went on to meet with the chiefs of the Oneida, Cayuga, Mohawk, and Seneca. Nation by nation, and slowly over the course of a century, they tried to unify the leaders into a grand council under one longhouse. Arodalho, the leader of the Onondaga, refused to join the other nations. Iowata and the peacemaker asked for help from Jigunsase, a woman now known as the first clan mother or the mother of nations. The peacemaker told Jigunsase that if she could stop the war, she would be the one to choose the chiefs of the confederacy. Eventually, Jigunsase meets Arodalho and calms his mind successfully. Transformed, Arodalho decided to abandon the war and agreed that the Onondaga nation could join the confederacy. It is said that for some time, another nation, the Seneca, did not want to ratify the confederacy. The peacemaker told them to wait for a sign in the sky, which would mean it was time for them to join. The Seneca nation did not know what that sign would look like, and then one day, a black sun appeared in the sky, a total solar eclipse, and they took it as a sign that they were waiting for in order to join the Confederacy. After many years of work to establish peace, the peacemaker was ready to meet with representatives from each nation. Each chief, Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Mohawk, and Oneida, brought wampum. The peacemaker took the individual strands of wampum and wove them into one belt and this is known as the Iowatha, or the English version, Hiawatha, wampum belt. Then the nations gathered beneath the tree of peace while the peacemaker held up the newly woven wampum belt. He recited the great law of peace for the first time. The tree was then uprooted and all weapons that were used in the war from the nations were cast into the hole beneath the tree. The tree was replanted and with that the great peace was established. The Haudenosaunee then have lived as a united people since then. This is known as the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, a very old participatory democracy, sometimes described as the oldest democracy on Turtle Island and sometimes all across the world. Today, there are six nations that are part of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Mohawk, Oneida, and Tuscarora. The Tuscarora Nation, the sixth nation, is said to have joined the Confederacy early, left, and then come back at a later date. Based on astronomical records of total solar eclipses that have crossed through Haudenosaunee traditional territory, archeological records, as well as information shared from indigenous knowledge keepers, some say that the Haudenosaunee Confederacy dates back to the year 1142. The Haudenosaunee Confederacy website states that the Confederacy has been in place forever or since time immemorial. Nyawa Goa for listening to this telling of the story of the total solar eclipse and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. 
to Nash Committee and Melanie, it's to say that for us in Canada, an eclipse is synonym of peace and unification. To conclude, I share with you a story from my community, a very, very old story. In the old days, people were not the chiefs and didn't hunt animals. Animals were the chief and hunted humans. They killed everyone except one girl and her little brother. The boy learned to hunt snowbirds and squirrels with bow and arrow. He became such a good hunter that he started to catch bigger prey. One day, he felt something was following him. His sister helped him fashion a snare and he set it along a path where the snow had melted. It was the sun's path. And as the sun rose, he got caught in the snare and darkness followed. The animals were afraid and amazed by the boy. They sent the biggest and most fearsome animal to try to free the sun. The caribou and the moose went first, but it was too hot. The hunting birds flew, but the fire burned their feathers. It was a tiny mouse who in those days was as big as a mountain who chewed through the snare, freeing the sun. But meanwhile, the intense heat shrunk him down to its present size. Since that time, the people have been hunting on the land and the sun and the moon are following their cycle. That little boy is Chakapesh. He's also known as the man on the moon. This story is tightly linked to annular eclipses of the sun, where this thin circle of light around the moon is the snare and the moon is Tsakabesh, who catches the sun. On this, I wish you a very good day on April 8th. Tsinish Komitin.